Hi, my name is Alicia Harstead, and I'm the Setsman County Extension Agent, and I'm going to talk to you today about horse feed or mare's tail management. Um, now, depending on where you're at in North Dakota, some people will call this weed horse feed, and some people will call it mare's tail. And for this presentation, I'm going to call it horse feed. So a little background on horse weed. It can be either winter annual or summer annual. Um, a lot of times we'll see it emerging in the fall as that winter annual um, growth habit, and, but it'll also emerge early in the spring. And that's what makes it really competitive with crops. A lot of times it will get a head start on its growth before the crop is planted. And it also has a wide emergence window. And that's one of those things that can make it difficult to control because you gotta be thinking about horse weed control throughout the whole season from the fall throughout the spring. Also, another thing that makes horse weed difficult to control is once it starts bolting, it's almost impossible to control with herbicides. In this picture here, you can see horse weed in the rosette stage, um, but in the spring, it'll start to bolt and then it gets really difficult to control. It also is a very high seed producer. It can produce up to 200,000 seeds per plant. So it's one of those weeds once it starts to get established, it can be difficult to keep under control. Horse weed was also picked as the 2020 weed of the year. And the biggest reason why uh, horse weed was picked as the weed of the year for 2020 is because fall is the best time to control horse weed. And the fall of 2019 was a very difficult uh, fall for harvest conditions. The fields were really wet and it really prevented people from being able to do fall tillage or even fall spraying. And so we anticipated that we were gonna see more horse speed in 2020 than we typically do. Um, in Indiana, they did a survey of some of their fields to see how much horse weed was um, in their fields between the different tillage systems. And they found that 61% of no-till fields had horse weed, whereas only 24% um, reduced till tillage fields had horse weed. And they only found horse weed in 8% of their conventional till fields. It was also, um, found that horse weed can be controlled with tillage, uh, even tilling just a quarter inch of soil can provide up to 95% control. So here's um, a, what horse weed looks like as a seedling. We'll just talk a little bit about identification. Um, this is what, really early in the growth stage. Here I'm gonna circle what the cotyledon looks like, those very first leaves that come out. Um, they are a little bit more oval. And then whereas the true leaves, they start to come out, um, they have a little bit more egg shaped. And if you notice really close here, you can even see some of the hairs a little bit on the, on the leaves. Here's some more pictures of what horse weed looks like um, as when it's a little bit bigger past that seedling stage. Um, here in this picture, you can see what, as the Horse weed gets a little bit bigger in that rosette stage. The leaves are um, linear, but they also have a little bit of a serrated edge. And then eventually they'll start to bolt. And that's what um, this picture looks like uh, after it's bolted. It'll get white flowers. And it's also how it gets its name with its horse tail like appearance, um, which is why it's called horse weed or mare's tail. Another thing that makes horse weed difficult to control is the herbicide resistance that horse weed has been able to um, develop. Uh, this list here is all the sites of action that horse weed has been confirmed resistance in the, the United States. In North Dakota, we do have group two or ALS resistant horse weed populations, and we also have glyphosate or group nine um, resistant horse weed. Um, so it's really important to be thinking about um, using more than just glyphosate in any of herbicide applications um, because it, if you're going to use glyphosate alone there's you probably aren't going to get that great of control because the there's a high likelihood that you're going to find some level of glyphosate resistance in pretty much all the populations of horse feed in North Dakota. Um, it's also a good idea to make sure you're using multiple sites of action just from a herbicide resistance management standpoint. So now we're gonna go through a couple 
um, control options for horse speed, starting with fall control. So again, fall is the best time to control horse speed. A couple of the options are glyphosate and 2,4-D with or without Sharpen, glyphosate and Sharpen, um, glyphosate and dicamba, and glyphosate and 2,4-D and Valor together. Uh, if you choose to do glyphosate with 2,4-D and Valor, uh, you may want to consider making the Valor application separate from glyphosate and 2,4-D to help reduce antagonism from rapid burn on the foliage. Um, also, with fall control, you really want to make sure that you're keeping in mind crop rotation restrictions. Um, so be thinking about what you're going to be planting that next spring so that whatever you're spraying that fall, that you don't run into crop rotation restrictions issues. Um, that's especially important if you're going to be uh, considering dicamba. So spring burn down is another option. Um, if you if you aren't able to get a fall burn down done, spring is another option. Um, but again, fall is the best time to control horse weed. Um, dicamba is an option, um, but remember to the plant back restrictions. So depending on what crop you have, um, some of these may or may not be the best option. So you can plant corn immediately after a dicamba application. Um, however, there's a 22-day plant back restriction for small grains and all of other crops, it's about four months. Elevore is another option that you can use for a spring burn down, but it does have a 14-day plant back restriction for canola, corn, soybeans, small grains, or sunflowers, uh, and has a nine-month uh, plant back restriction for pretty much all other crops. Um, Paraquat is an option that doesn't uh, really have plant back restrictions for crops um, since it is a burn or a contact type herbicide and Sharpen is another option. However, Sharpen, once you get over the one ounce per acre rate, um, then you really start restricting uh, the the plant back restriction for Sharpen. So you can apply one ounce per acre and there's no plant back restriction for chickpeas, lentils, corn, peas, small grains, or soybeans. But um, once you get over that ounce, then it starts to get quite a bit more restrictive. So now I'm gonna go through some of the wheat and soybean control options for in the crop. Um, for wheat, for pre-plant or pre, you can use glyphosate uh, with 2,4-D or Sharpen. And then post-emergence, you probably have the most options for horse feed control post-emergence in wheat than any of the other crops. And your options are 2,4-D plus Star and Flex, Husky, Husky Complete, uh, Gold Sky, Corsivore, Perfect Match, Wide Match, or Weld. In soybean, here are some of the options for pre-plant or pre. Uh, they include glyphosate plus dicamba, glyphosate plus 2,4-D ester, um, glyphosate and sharpen, um, glyphosate plus 2,4-D plus sharpen, uh, and 2,4-D plus paraquat and metribuzin, and glyphosate plus elevore. And then also residual products are always a good option for in the spring to help reduce the number of horse weeds that emerge. Um, throughout the spring, and they include Spartan, Valor, or Metribuzin. Um, but again, remember or be thinking about your plant back restrictions. If you plan on planting extend soybeans, you don't have to worry about the plant back restrictions for dicamba. Um, but if you're not planting extend beans, then it's a four month restriction. Um, 2,4-D ester does have a seven day plant back interval and then sharpen, again, watching that rate of sharpen. If you go over one ounce per acre um, rate, then you then you run into plant back restrictions. But if you stay at that one ounce per acre um, rate, then you don't have to worry about the plant back restriction. Um, once you get to that 1.5 ounces per acre, then there's a 14 day um, plant back restriction and it uh, continuously goes up as you increase that rate. So post-emergence um, control of horse feed in soybeans, control options include first rate, but first rate is an ALS or group two herbicide. So if you have some of that group two or ALS resistant horse feed, you're probably not gonna get as good control with first rate. Um, some other options include um, dicamba if you are uh, growing 
um, extend soybeans by making sure that you are applying the approved dicamba formulations for that. Um, and then Liberty Link soybeans is also another option with glufosinate. And you list soybeans, you can use the 2,4-D choline formulation with glufosinate or glyphosate. So as a summary of horse weed control, make sure you're using effective herbicides um, in the fall, because uh, fall is the best time to be controlling um, horse weed. Apply residual herbicides in the spring to help reduce the, those, those flushes that you get in the spring, and making sure you're focusing on controlling horse weed in the rosette stage. Once you get past that rosette stage and the plants start bolting, it's pretty much impossible or very difficult to control horse weed once they've started to bolt. And then, of course, tillage is um, another good option for horse weed um, control, whether you decide to do tillage in the fall or in the spring. So if you want more information about horse weed, a really good resource is the North Dakota Weed Control Guide. Since it was the 2020 uh, weed of the year, it's, in, it's on page 150 of the 2020 North Dakota Weed Control Guide, and you can find that online at the North Dakota Weed Science webpage that I have listed here on the slide. Um, all of the previous weeds of the year um, are you can find on that um, webpage. You can also find some of the weed science research that's been going on, as well as all the weed guides there too. So if you have any questions, you can always ask me. Um, again, my name is Alicia Harstead at the Stutzman County Extension Office, and I have my contact information there below. Um, but I also hope you join us for, we are having a, a webinar on December 3rd for all the Central Dakota Egg Day speakers will be on there uh, on a panel. And so it's an opportunity for people that are at watching all the Central Dakota Egg Day presentations to ask us um, presenters questions. So I really hope you join us for the, the, the panel discussion on December 3rd, and also hope you enjoy all the other Central Dakota Egg Day presentations. Thank you.